Hey, welcome back everyone. It is now December 16th of 2021 and we're just getting very close to the official release of the Book of Boba Fett series by Robert Rodriguez, Jon Favreau, and Dave Filoni that are really going to kind of change the entire tone of Star Wars. We are finally going to be able to get a nice first look at the underworld of the Star Wars franchise as well as this post-return of the Jedi era, as well as taking us in between the events of The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi and learning more exactly how he survived the Sarlacc Pit. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel for future Star Wars updates. Also, by the way, guys, I am on Twitter at MikeZero1. If you guys want to go ahead and give me a follow on there, I do post a couple of entertaining things from time to time and really make sure to interact with you guys further. So, what's so exciting right now about the future of the franchise is that, yes, we do have Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni working closely with George Lucas on a number of TV shows, a number of projects that will be announced at Celebration next year. So, not only do we have the already announced material, but we're, we are actually going to be getting more Star Wars TV show announcements this upcoming May. So, that's another thing to look forward to and to kind of etch on your calendar to kind of look forward to that. Now, the thing about the overall structure of the Mandoverse, we already know that the Mandoverse consists of Mandalorian Season 3 and 4, the Ahsoka Tano series, and a lot more other shows that are currently in development that's going to be announced by Bob Chapek in the coming months. Now, with that being said, however, when it all dwindles down to actress Daisy Ridley, all right, this is something very interesting in how it involves creator Jon Favreau. So Daisy Ridley of the Star Wars sequel trilogy, all right, movies, we always knew that, you know, Daisy Ridley has been very much hush-hush about her experience on Star Wars and the sets of the franchise for the last couple of years. However, during this year of 2021, she's been more talkative, more vivid about her experience on the sets of episodes 7, 8, and 9. And what's really all the more intriguing is what she had to say about Jon Favreau, of all people. So, with both Disney and Lucasfilm now focused on their new Star Wars universe, both Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni have been heavily invested in their new Star Wars TV shows for Disney Plus as well as the new Star Wars lore that is being created to further connect everything together. Now, it's described that, however, in a recent interview, actress Daisy Ridley was questioned about her experience on the set of The Rise of Skywalker and the final days of her being a part of Star Wars. Daisy Ridley was eventually questioned about creator Jon Favreau and what she thinks about his take on the franchise. Daisy went on to explain, You know, it's a funny thing because when we were getting ready to create episode 9, Mr. Favreau held an interest in serving as a co-writer alongside J.J. Abrams for episode 9, and it was something that was in the talks for quite a while between J.J. and Kathleen Kennedy when they were searching for a co-writer. What I found to be very rude was that they actually thought that Favreau at the time was not so talented as a writer suited for a Star Wars movie at the time, especially for a feature film. I can say that early on, Favreau had gotten in touch with Disney and Disney had pitched Favreau to Kennedy to become a part of a Star Wars movie. At the time, Kathleen Kennedy declined the proposal by Disney and wanted nothing to do with Favreau as she felt that he was not fit for a Star Wars film and only for a Star Wars TV show, and had different plans as a backup for Chris Terrio. Another thing that I actually do recall is how Kennedy was very on edge about Favreau doing The Mandalorian. Kennedy was never really excited about Favreau joining Star Wars in the first place, and that was very much pressed on, of course, by Miss Kennedy by Bob Iger at the time. It came off like she didn't want anything to do with Favreau, you know? Daisy Ridley also went on to explain that Favreau had actually pitched a handful of scenes to be done for Episode 9 to both J.J. Abrams and Chris Terrio once Terrio was chosen as a co-writer and that Favreau wanted tons of scenes to be done with Luke Skywalker for Episode 9 and, of course, was even warning J.J. and Chris that this is what the fans wanted. I remember vividly that J.J. and Chris Terrio brushed off John's ideas for Episode 9 and figured... He knew nothing about what he was talking about. You see, this is what I don't understand about Hollywood sometimes. It's like it's one big competition, you know? The egos are too strong for some people and they don't want anyone's help that's out of their range of work. 
Disney believed, of course, Disney, believe it or not, wanted Favreau to work on episode 9, but Kennedy made sure that Chris Terrio would actually handle the co-writing business. And hey, I mean, Chris Terrio turned out okay, he handled my scenes on Exegol pretty well and all, but I always found it very rude as to why they didn't want anything to do with Mr. Favreau for a Star Wars film. I mean, like, he's such a big Star Wars fan of the franchise. I remember even watching Swingers before my rehearsals for The Force Awakens, just recalling his little references to Star Wars. But yeah, this business is a tough line of work sometimes, and you just have to deal with it in the long run. Now, here's the thing about Daisy Ridley, alright? What I like so much about her lately is that she's really spewing out the truth and being more direct to the fans. And I think the reason being is because, well, she really does want to detach herself from Star Wars, even though she is in the talks with Favreau to reprise her role as Rey in the form of a cameo for a post-Episode 9 era, as well as in the Rise of Skywalker sequel series to provide some voiceover work. But other than that, Daisy Ridley is not really going to be involved in anything super major where she's going to be the main character with tons of screen time and all. The thing about this, however, is that what she's unveiling here is that Kathleen Kennedy really does have this ego-driven lifestyle where she wanted nothing to do with a person like Favreau that is so driven, mind you, by the lore of the Star Wars universe and how he's a direct Star Wars fan. He loves what he does. At least right now, he's working on a lot of TV shows. It just shines right through. You can see the passion by Favreau just by watching The Mandalorian. And I gotta say, I mean, as much as I love season one, season two is even better. You see the passion even all the more so because that's when Kathleen Kennedy literally had zero involvement on the creative scale for the Mandalorian series. Meanwhile, with season one, she is the one that denied or refused, I should say, for any of the major cameos to become a part of season one. You know, in case you guys didn't know this, originally, Favreau wanted Luke, Ahsoka, and others like Boba Fett to become a part of Season 1 of Mando, or at the very minimum, references, and we got nothing of that, and that was all because of Kathleen Kennedy. So, what Daisy Ridley was able to unveil, I think, is very important because I think it gives us a more clear image, if you will, of who Kathleen Kennedy really is and exactly the fact that she does not care about Star Wars. Let's not forget the famous, you know, quote that she said a couple of, I guess it was like two years ago at this point, close to two years ago, where she said, there is no source material when it comes to Star Wars Legends. Like, that does not exist. There's nothing to take from Star Wars Legends because there's no source material. It's almost like as if she's just trying to lie to the fans that there are no Star Wars Legends books, novels, comics, or video games to draw from. And it's her excuse to pretty much just do her own thing by her own agenda. But like I say, guys, I mean, I think that Favreau, regardless, I think that he would have been great for episode nine. He would have been a great co-writer working with J.J. Abrams. He could have even leveled out some of J.J. Abrams' flaws because I do believe J.J. has a lot of flaws in episode nine for the scenes that he wrote. I don't know if you guys ever paid attention to who wrote what for episode 9, but a lot of those Exegol scenes were done by Chris Terrio, and J.J. Abrams did a lot of the work for some of the other scenes, such as the Battle of Exegol over the surface. As for Rey, of course, you know, we got a lot of that from J.J., and a lot of people didn't really like her calling herself a Skywalker. That was all J.J.'s idea by, of course, Kathleen Kennedy as well. So, anyways, guys, you know, drop a comment below. Let me know about all this in the comments, and if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.